Welcome to our lesson today on the quotient property and operations with radicals. First, I'd like you to consider this discovery. There's part A and part B. I'd like you to pause, take a minute, and give your thoughts. Are these questions true, yes or no? Welcome back. So in part A, it's asking, is the square root of 81 subtract the square root of 16 equivalent to the square root of 81 minus 16? The answer would be no. So the square root of 81 is 9. Subtract 4 would give you a value of 5. If we do 81 subtract 16, we get the square root of 65 which is not equivalent to 5. So the answer is no. In part B, we have the square root of 81, which is 9, divided by the square root of 16, which is 4. And over here, we have, we can split it out. And the square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of 16 is 4. So it works out to be equivalent. So the answer is yes. So we can conclude that the square root of a subtract the square root of b is not equivalent to the square root of a subtract b. However, the square root of a divided by the square root of b is equivalent to the quotient square root of a divided by b. So this leads us to the quotient property of square roots. The square root of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the square roots of the numerator and the denominator. So here we have the square root of a divided by the square root of b is equivalent to the square root of a over b. Noting that a can be greater than or equal to zero, it cannot be negative for a square root, and it can be equal to zero, but the denominator must be greater than zero. You cannot divide by zero, and the denominator has to be greater than zero. So neither the numerator or denominator can be negative. An example, the square root of 25 divided by the square root of nine is equivalent to the square root of 25 ninths because five thirds is equivalent to five thirds. So let's apply this. So we have the square root of 17 divided by the square root of 81. We can rewrite this as the square root of 17 divided by the square root of 81 and simplify. The square root of 17 will leave in radical form because it's not a perfect square. And since 17 is prime, there's no way to simplify it. Divided by the square root of 81, which is 9. So in simplest form, it's equivalent to the square root of 17 divided by 9. Now let's try the square root of 100 divided by y squared. So sometimes you'll have variables in your expressions. This would be equivalent to the square root of 100 divided by the square root of y squared, which in simplest form is 10 divided by y. We can also apply these properties to cube roots. So the same apl properties apply from the previous a uh, video that you watched on product property of radicals and the quotient property of radicals can both be applied to the properties of cube roots. So here I have the cube root of negative 192. So I'm going to rewrite this radicand looking for perfect cubes. Negative 64 times 3 is equivalent to negative 192. So I can rewrite this as negative 64 times 3, reminding you that the cube root of a value can be negative. So the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. The cube root of 3 is in simplest form. So the cube root of negative 192 in simplest form is negative 4 cube root of 3. Let's try another one. Cube root of 27x to the fifth. So I have the cube root of 27 times the cube root of x to the fifth. The cube root of 27 is 3. 
the cube root of x to the fifth is, you could say, x cubed times x squared. The cube root of x cubed is x, leaving the x squared as the radicand. So in simplest form, it's 3x cube root of x squared. Your turn. Please pause the video, try these four examples, and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's check how you did. So x to the fifth divided by 64, the square root of that. Let me grab my pen. So over here I have x to the fourth times x all over 8 squared. So the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 8 squared is 8, leaving me just this x under the radicand. So x squared, square root of x, divided by 8. The square root of 36x squared divided by 121. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 121 is 11. So 6x over 11. Over here, we have the cube root of negative 54. So that can be rewritten as, I'll grab my pencil, the cube root of negative 27 times 2. So negative 27 times 2 is negative 54, and negative 27 is a perfect cube, which is negative 3. So I'm left with 2 and the radicand. So negative 3, cube root of 2. The next one, we have the cube root of 125 is 5, the cube root of 343 is 7, the cube root of y cubed is y, and then we have x squared that is not a perfect cube, so that remains under the radicand. So the answer would be 5 cube root of x squared all divided by 7y. We can also perform operations with radicals. Radicals that have the same index and the same radicand are considered like terms. Just like algebraic like terms, you can combine like radical terms in expressions involving addition and subtraction. So here we have the square root of 2, subtract 3 square root of 17, plus 7 square root of 2. First, you want to evaluate each term in your expression and make sure that each of the radical terms are in simplest form. These all happen to be in simplest form. 2, 17, and 2 are prime numbers, so those radicands are in simplest form. Then you look for like terms. The square root of 2 and 7 square root of 2 are like terms because they have the same radicand, 2, and the same index. They're both 2. Remember that square root has an invisible 2 there. So because they are like radicands, we can add them. So there's an invisible 1 here. This is 1 square root of 2. Add 7 square root of 2, giving you 8 square root of 2. Subtract 3 square root of 17. So this is now in simplest form. Let's try another one. So looking at 8 square root of 24, subtract 6 square root of 54. First, I need to simplify these radical terms. They are not in simplest form. The square root of 24 can be written as 4 times 6, where 4 is a perfect square. And 54 can be written as 6 times 9, where 9 is a perfect square. So writing these in perfect, um, in simplest form, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 8 is 16, leaving me a radicand of 6. In this term, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and I leave the radicand of 6. Now these are like terms.
because they have the same index 2, and they both have a radicand of 6, so we can add their coefficients. 16 subtract 18 is negative 2 square root of 6. Your turn. Go ahead and pause the video. Complete these problems and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. First thing we're going to do is write these radicands in simplest form. So 32 can be written as 2 times 16. 16 is a perfect square, which is 4. 4 times 9 is 36, leaving me a radicand of 2. The square root of 2 is already in simplest form. These are now like radical terms because they have the same index and the same radicand. Remember, there's an invisible 1 here. So this is 36 plus 1 is 37 square root of 2. The second one, we have three radical terms. The first two are in simplest form, but this third term is not in simplest form. The square root of 28 can be written as 4 times 7. 4 is a perfect square. 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So this in simplest form is 2 square root of 7. So now I have two terms that are like terms in this radical expression. The square, 3 square root of 7 and 2 square root of 7 have the same index and the same radicand, so their coefficients can be combined. 3 plus 2 is 5, so I have 5 square root of 7 subtract 5 square root of 14. Thank you for joining me today.